Hi, welcome to Uncovering the Valley with Tammy Collins. I wouldn't normally be doing a show on Memorial Day, but I have the privilege of having someone very special as my guest today, Mr. Tony LoBianco. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you for all of your work throughout the years on stage and screen and a couple of Emmy nominations and all of these kinds of things. Thank you. I was thrilled to death to get to watch a project that you're very, very proud of. And I tell you, I don't um, think I could have gotten through it without tears <laughs> streaming down my face. A Common Soldier. And we just learned this morning that there have been 17 million views. Yes, yes, I'm extremely, you know, I've done a hundred films and countless plays and so on yes. and so forth, and I've had a long, long career. But uh, these five minutes for this video is really something that's very close to my heart. And uh, it's called Just a Common Soldier. Mm -hmm. And it's a, uh, uh, you can go see it on, uh, uh, www.justacommonsoldier.com on uh, YouTube and, mm -hmm. and other places, but it's, it's, it is something that is, uh, as, as you said, 17 million people have seen this. I am, I am beside myself, <laughs> delirious. We, we, our goal was to, uh, to get 21 million because that's how many uh, <clears throat> uh, veterans there are or I should say were, mm -hmm. when we released it. We only released this, this last Memorial Day. Wow. So this is less than a year that we have 17 million. Gosh. It's, aston it's astounding. It astounding is. Because <clears throat> we didn't even have any uh, professional uh, PR offices distributing it. So it's just friends and organizations that we, we put it out to. So we're very, very proud of it, and it's going to grow up. And it'll be there, thank God, it'll be there forever. So can you tell me what inspired you to do, were you just sitting at home one day thinking, gosh, there needs to be something more done for veterans that have given their lives in combat, or what brought this project well, about? It's, it's always something that I've always uh, uh, thought about, uh, about our veterans. I've always cared about our veterans. I've, I care about our police department. Mm. I care about our, our constitution. Amen. And, uh, <laughs> And uh, so they, and in the way our veterans <clears throat> have been treated, not only when they came back from Vietnam, mm. but the way they're treated at our VA hospitals is disgraceful. We have no, no right to do that to our, to our heroes. Absolutely. Because agree. if it weren't for them, we'd be speaking German. Yes. Or some other language. And, uh, and have no freedoms that we have uh, in, in this country today. So we owe them everything. And that should be underlined. We owe our veterans everything. And, uh, and I, I can't do enough to uh, uh, support them. And again, our Constitution and the laws of our country, which seem to be ignored yes. completely. And uh, we're going to do another one for our men in blue. And, ho and another one I hope for our Vietnam veterans and the disgrace that they mm. were brought home to being spat upon and what have you. I mean, it's disgraceful. We have a, we have a, a very low uh, standard in this country uh, uh, for uh, our people, the way our people behave. Mm. It's, it's disrespectful and, and, more, and worse. So I'm very, I, uh, I, uh, um, I mean, take a look at our, our election you know, where we are. I mean, it's, uh, it's astounding. And it's a reaction, obviously, yes. both, both on the Republican side, a Democratic side. It's a reaction. Uh, I'm, when I talk about the Democratic side, I mean the Bernie, the Bernie uh, socialist, communist, right. uh, <clears throat> being brought in to uh, the mainstream of our country. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, outrage that the people have had for our congressmen have been palatable, to say the least. And uh, this is the result. This is the result of where we're at, because the people are very un unhappy with our past and present administration and what's, go what's going on in our, in our, in our Congress and our country. So these are the, this is the reaction when people say, oh, Donald Trump, Bernie Sanders, what? Uh, both sides have been divided. We have all been divided in the last eight years. We have racial mm. divide. We mm. have more. A disruption going on, more illegals in our country, more borders being broken, and something has to be done about it. Uh, you know, we're we're very generous people, you know, but there is reality, and the reality is when you have a country that has a almost twenty trillion dollar 
deficit and people out of work, I don't think the answer is to allow more illegal people to come into the country to take the jobs from people who need them. Right. And the answer also is not to keep spending money you don't have. <laughs> you don't, you don't uh, borrow it from the enemy mm. and you don't print it. Right. which is what we've done. That's not the solution. Right. And uh, when you stop talking about uh, shovel-ready jobs, mm. you know, and take all that money and spend all that money on shovel-ready jobs, and then you go on a television show as a president of the United States and say, oh, I guess I was wrong. There was no shovel-ready jobs. I mean, what are we, what are we doing? I'm ready I mean, to vote for you for president. <laughs> 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 but I mean, I, I'm not making anything up. It's not even right. an opinion. You it's know, it's facts. What's, what's facts. Yes. These, this is what's happened. This is where we're at. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and and when a a, a country uh, changes the government uh, and votes in, in an election and says to the uh, conservatives and the Republicans, "This is what we're up against," and and puts the Republicans in power in the Congress, and they they fall right into line with this mm -hmm. president, that's, what, that's why we're in a revolt. Absolutely. That's why we are where we are. There's no mystery to it. It's so simple, right. you know? So we'll see what happens, you know? It is, uh, we'll see what the, what the people are really made of. Well, know? and I think to myself being a Christian, I think a lot of times we're the silent majority. Mm -hmm. And everything that you just said pretty much sums up the things that I've been saying for the last year. Mm -hmm. And this country is ripe for a civil war. Yeah. Because this this administration and others have really just created, um, it's a mess. That's right. Just to make it plain and simple, it's an absolute mess. That's true. Absolutely. They, they've divided the country. They've trained. These people have been trained. And we, they've done a terrific job on brainwashing the public and making them understand you know, uh, you know what to go out and buy, what to do, what to think, and so on and so forth. That's their job. You see, the public is not supposed to, I mean, public who's wise, mm. is not supposed to get sucked in to that. They're supposed to know how oh, it's a commercial, and they're doing that. But they don't have that ability because they grew up on it. This is why some <clears throat> knowing uh, parents don't let their children watch television. Including Madonna, I read. Oh, yeah? How interesting is How it interesting. that Madonna does not let her daughter uh, watch television? Well, she must have learned oh. yeah. not to watch her. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, I believe it was Khrushchev that said, in just a few generations, your grandchildren will be living under communism. That's right. And it's because we're going to feed it to them in spoons full. That's right. And not a and shot need to be fired. Exactly. It's going right. to be from the inside out. And that's, that's right. Exactly and you see it all going on inside out. What has you know, happened? Black Lives Matter. I think all lives matter. I, I, no kidding, <laughs> really. You and I, we all know that. And we also know blue lives matter. Absolutely. So uh, we may be doing a, a, that video on blue, blue lives matter as well. So I, I think there's got to be some kind of common sense. That I know it's a foreign word. It is. Two foreign words. Mm -hmm. They're common sense. It doesn't exist anymore. Mm -mm. And logic and truth and fact. These are all foreign words now in, <laughs> in our country, you know? Yes. You know, I think, I think freedom's a marvelous thing, but you have to really earn it. You know, it's, it, you have to understand what the respect and, and, uh, of, of having freedom is, knowing the responsibility of freedom, you know, and how to use it. And you have to be sort of educated <laughs> before you can use it. You can't just go do what you want. You know, mm -hmm. is that that commercial, just do it? Uh, I think it's a Nike commercial. Mm -hmm. You don't just do it. No, you don't just do it. You have to know the responsibility of what happens after you're thinking about doing it. Right. What's the result going to be? You know? And I think we've gone on to a just do it, just to, you know, feel free to do anything you want. It's, it, this is where we are. This is that generation of, of who, who and what we are now because they just do it. You know? I mean, your husband, your husband's a Marine. Yes. God bless him. Love and, him. Uh, we're tremendously proud of him. I am. And, uh, and a, a true American, you know, and we really have to take a great deal of pride in our country and, and who we are and what we, what we did during the Reagan years. Mm. There was a man, there was a true man, a man who came in, said what he, uh, you know, uh, did what he said he was going to do, and uh, 
and was a leader, leader of a country. And uh, he was all smart, so smart enough, everybody's worried, you know, about him when he first came in, oh, an actor, a cowboy kind of a thing. And they were all worried, but that, it worked. It worked in our favor sure for did. the 444 days of those prisoners in Iran that were let go immediately as soon as he came in. Mm. Well, let's hope maybe they maybe they fear this uh, this Trump character in the in the same way. It's possible. Well, let's Who hope knows, if if he does that, if he wins, you know. But I mean, it's that kind of. Well, what is he going to do? Where is he going to go? Is he a wild man? Is this what, okay? Maybe that's what we need now. Maybe that's what we need. Mm. I don't know. We're 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 in a shambles, and pe and the, and the throwing more money at at it to make people not even understand what I'm talking about. Right. Because there are a lot of people who have no clue. Because they're going along singing a song. You know. You know. I'm talking like it's it's a it's a disaster because they don't understand. What they don't understand is that twenty trillion dollar deficit means that every man, woman, and child owe almost eighty. Thousand dollars each. Mm. Okay, that's your responsibility. That's what you're going to have to pay. Eighty thousand dollars. See, back I do a show on uh, Mayor Fiorello Laguardia, mm. former mayor of New York City, mm -hmm. and I say in the play, "My, we have a deficit budget of two hundred and fifty-one billion dollars. That means that every man, woman, and child owe almost two thousand dollars each." Back in 1940, where are we? What is that? You know, how does that translate to what we're what we're doing now? Mm. I'm probably being modest and saying seventy or eighty thousand dollars each. It's probably well, a that's lot today. More. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today. Yeah. <laughs> Wait next week, it, and right, it'll be exactly. more. Exactly. Right. And uh, unfortunately, our our leader. Uh, you use that term stab, loosely, don't I, you? Very loosely, <laughs> almost a stabbing my heart. Uh, uh, is not through. He has oh, uh, no. months to go, mm. and as you just saw, what he did on Memorial Day, and he 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 will go right to the end, pardoning everybody that you could imagine, just like uh, Clinton uh, pardoned uh, Mark Rich. Uh, mm. uh, he's on the ten most wanted list, and he pardoned him, you know, because he was dealing with his wife in in uh, in New York and her charity and so on and so forth. There's a million dollars involved in there. I used to, I tend those things. I know what I'm talking mm -hmm. about, you know. And uh, so um, so we have a situation here that's rather remarkable. But what do I know? <laughs> it's not like you've not been around that horn. <laughs> yeah. But you know, being born in Brooklyn and growing up the way I have uh, and it's, you wonder why people from Brooklyn are always successful. There's a tremendous thick book of all the names of, of guys who run companies and, and, uh, and from Brooklyn, of all places. And you know what, what it is? You fight. You understand, you understand poverty, mm -hmm. and, and you, under, you well, I shouldn't say you understand it. You don't even know you're poor. <laughs> you know? Yeah. When, you, when you have nothing, you don't know you have nothing, and you're grateful for a toy. That's what we had, mm -hmm. a toy, you see? And uh, we played outside, and we played, we had Italian-Irish uh, competition. When I say competition, we fought all the time. Mm -hmm. But it was my, my kind of, of uh, life that I grew up was, was uh, my father was a ta taxi cab driver, my mother a uh, uh, housewife, and I have two brothers, and we, uh, uh, were active and, by com and competitive with uh, good was no good. Right. The good was normal, you see. You had to be, you, gotta, you, you know, had to make the team. You had, to, you had to do something extraordinary. So when we had played catch outside, we didn't play catch. We threw the ball in the most difficult place to catch the ball. Now, so many people who are watching know what I'm talking about mm -hmm. because you, you, know, you, throw, you throw the ball over your head and you crash into a fence. You throw the ball at your knees, at, I mean at your shins, you know, to do pickups. You dive for balls. You, you, you have to go beyond the normal uh, uh, pleasantry mm. of the idea. That, that does not, the pleasantry is not going to teach you anything. Struggle and difficulty is the teacher. So they know that in the military, 
Mm. They take them in there to be a Marine. <laughs> you know, to be a Marine is not, to, you know, you discipline and so on. And so that's what we should do. Yes. When they come out of the military after they've served our country, they should be the first in line to get a, the, the best job, the best, best education, and of course, the best health care. That is unconscionable that our military has to wait out there. But, uh, I mean, those are lessons in a, in a world that you should be teaching a world how to grow and, and, and become. Take the best of what's around in, in the world and use it for your, for your good. We, we have a habit of, 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 of ignoring history. It's astounding. Yes. History is our teacher. You know, is, we know it should, we should, we're not inventing the wheel. You know, we're, start, we're not starting over. We have all the knowledge of how to do it. We, we're at the top of the world, and especially in this country. Mm -hmm. In this country, we're so ahead in so, in, in so many ways. Take from Israel, take from this one, take from the best, and use it to your advantage. It's the same, the same uh, way you, you want to improve yourself. As I said, good is no good, good is normal. You know, you got to be out of out of sight, brilliant and beyond belief, and and be energetic and do do things that, that cannot be done. I do this one man show, uh, this LaGuardia show, mm -hmm. and it's an hour and a half, one man, I have an hour and a half of speech. Well, you can tell I can talk. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ask me a question? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, but, but the idea of, the idea of doing that show is a tremendous challenge, especially at my tender age. Mm. You know what I mean? Uh, tender, very delicate. A at very this delicate age. age, you know. So, uh, so uh, that's tough. And when it's tough, that's what I want to do. What's difficult is. That's that's how you. That's where I came from, Brooklyn. It was tough. You overcome. You overcome. Fight, fight for for whatever you have to do, and it even led me to box in the in the uh, uh, club fighting I did. That's most most guys from Brooklyn in the in the streets did the box in the street box, and and then I did. The, I was in the Golden Gloves. I was going to say most most of those guys on the streets don't get golden. Uh, no, no, <laughs> golden, no, no gloves. golden Gloves is, is a. Is a <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, it's a fancy word. It has nothing to do with the gold, the giving right, gold, right. you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's funny. I don't ever remember just telling somebody before that in my first fight, you know, I was lucky enough to knock a guy out in the first round, okay? We were kids. We were 17, 16 times. And, uh, and I knew that I, he was just more scared than I was, you know. <laughs> so, and I, I and I came out. So uh, the crowd was, you know, hey, cheering, cheering, yeah. cheering. And as I was walking down the aisle back to the dressing room, and the crowd is cheering, one guy said, "Ah, he wasn't so good." He, I remember, because he was right. <laughs> <laughs> In a world where everyone gets a tiara and a trophy. There you go. Which makes me completely insane. Insane. <laughs> insane. How's anybody going to learn anything? You don't. Getting you a don't. trophy. Everybody getting a trophy. How dare they do that to anybody? So, being a Hollywood legend. Oh, no, don't make that face. <laughs> that is absolutely true. No, thank you. When you are at dinner parties or you're at charity events or whatnot and your faith comes out if you want to say grace before you have dinner or or you say before we go out on stage let's say a prayer mm -hmm. how, how is that welcomed or not welcomed by some of the other Hollywood elites that you hobnob with well I think you have to know who you're with before you do that mm -hmm. you don't want to interfere with their own their lives and uh, if you want to say a prayer before you go on or before you eat, you have to know who's around you. So um, just like in school, I guess when they say we don't say prayers anymore, mm. anybody could say a prayer within themselves. That's right. Uh, and, uh, you know, there's, there's plenty of time to do that. Uh, I married my fantastic wife, she Elise. She is something. Mm -hmm. Elise, she is, she is something is right. And uh, uh, she's a very religious lady and uh, we say grace every meal and uh, and certainly we have our friends and family over we always say grace and uh, sometimes if we have a uh, uh, like we had a, a party with the a, a, a gathering we brought, we got the uh, uh, Italian the Italian uh, council general for dinner mm -hmm. and we had the, the council general of Egypt oh. with us and we had the council general of Israel 
Oh. All together. Mm. And so that was a questionable thing to start to say grace or not to say grace or, or so on. And um, so we, I don't know what we did. I can't remember exactly, but I don't think we said the same kind of grace that we usually say. <laughs> so I guess it's just to know, you know, who's around and who you're with and so on and so forth. Well, I don't think it's it stopped your career at all, uh, being a Christian. I, if anything, I think it's, it's probably blessed your career. But I do know that sometimes, um, you know, Hollywood folks are not quite so open to mm -hmm. to Christians, and sometimes it can be um, a, a career breaker for them. Mm -hmm. But that certainly hasn't. No, I, hasn't, I've never noticed that in terms of of uh, re religion, in terms of being a Christian. Uh, or Jew, or so on and so forth. But of course, Republican or conservative, mm. uh, in, in certain quarters, in uh, in Hollywood, could stunt your growth. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we have a, we have a, quite a, a group in both New York and uh, California that are. Uh, FOA, Friends of Abe Lincoln, mm, mm -hmm. who are like-minded people. And so they meet and they talk and uh, discuss the issues. And we have speakers come, uh, uh, political speakers, and we get behind them. Uh, so we do as much as we can, well, you know, good. to try to uh, change our change the uh, complexion of our country uh, and our world for our children and for the future of That's this right. country. That's right. That's what counts. Well, it has been my pleasure having you on my show today. I appreciate you so much agreeing to come on and talk to me and being so open and honest and bringing your lovely wife. And <laughs> just this has been really, really great. Thank and you. please go on to the internet and look up justacommonsoldier.com and check it out. Read, read some of the history of, uh, of Tony LoBianco because it's quite impressive. And um, hopefully we'll be on together again at some point I would doing love it. something. That love would be it. You're so delightful. Fun. Oh, You're delightful. Thank you. So thank you so you. much. It's been very, very that. charming to, to sit here with you and, and enjoy you. Oh, thank <laughs> you so much. Thank you for letting us come into your homes today. And we'll see you next time on Uncovering the Valley with Tammy Collins. getting old and paunchy, and his hair was falling fast. And he sat around the Legion telling stories of the past, of a war that he had fought in, and the deeds that he had done, and his exploits with his buddies. They were heroes, every one. And though sometimes to his neighbors his tales became a joke, all his legion buddies listened, for they knew whereof he spoke. But we'll hear his tales no longer, for old Bill has passed away. The world's a little poor, for a soldier died today. He will not be mourned by many, just his children and his wife. For he lived an ordinary and quite uneventful life. He held a job and raised a family, quietly going his own way. And the world won't note his passing, though a soldier died today. When politicians leave this earth, their bodies lie in state while thousands note their passing and proclaim that they were great. Papers tell their whole life stories from the time that they were young, but the passing of a soldier goes unnoticed and unsung. 
is the greatest contribution to the welfare of our land? A guy who breaks his promise and cons his fellow man? Or the ordinary fellow who in times of war and strife goes off to serve his country and offers up his life? A politician's stipend and the style in which he lives are sometimes disproportionate to the service that he gives, while the ordinary soldier who has offered up his all is paid off with a medal and perhaps a pension, small. It's so easy to forget them, for it was so long ago that the old bills of our country went to battle. But we know it was not the politicians with their compromises and ploys who won for us the freedom that our country now enjoys. Should you find yourself in danger with your enemies at hand, would you want a politician with his ever-shifting stand? Or would you prefer a soldier who has sworn to defend his home, his kin and country, and would fight until the end? He was just a common soldier, and his ranks are growing thin. But his presence should remind us we may need his like again. For when countries are in conflict, then we find the soldier's part is to clean up all the troubles that the politicians start. If we cannot do him honor while he's here to hear the praise, then at least let's give him homage at the ending of his day. Perhaps just a simple headline in a paper that would say, Our country is in mourning for a soldier died.